You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name starts with a P and ends with an L. <laughs> That's right. Well done. Um, this is, what is this, Sesame Street? This is uh, episode 842, in case you're wondering. And that's, uh, right. that's Rob, and I'm Paul, and welcome to another show. This is going to be a good one because we're kind of kind of be explaining why we don't really why we don't really recommend the Mavic Pro to a lot of business users. Uh, we have a good question coming in from a user saying, you know, I hear you guys all the time saying Phantom 4 Pro, Phantom 4 Pro, Phantom 4 Pro. Why? Why don't you, you know, recommend the Mavic Pro? And there's actually a lot of calculated reasons to that. I only want to give people advice that's like really more focused on turning your toy into a tool and building revenue with that, which is why we recommend the Phantom 4 Pro. But with the new Mavic Pro 2 and Mavic Zoom 2, that's going to be quite the game changer as we're going to see a one inch CMOS sensor, not from Sony this time, from Hasselblad. Mm. Very interesting. How many megapixels will it be? I'm not really sure. We don't know that yet. We are expecting it soon. But the good news is, is the Mavic Pro could, you know, bridge the gap from toy to tool. And we're going to explain that and so much more in this episode. So stick around if you're wondering why we never recommend the Mavic Pro, although I take it with me everywhere I go. Isn't that interesting? Huh? That is very interesting. I guess it just depends what you're asking to use it for. Well, like right? at Ho in Hawaii, you know, when I went on my honeymoon, I did, had very limited space. Mm -hmm. And Sarah was up my butt about not uh, bringing a lot of camera gear, which I typically do. <laughs> more than your actual clothes luggage. <laughs> Yeah, right. My clothes is actually like the smallest case. <laughs> that's that's a backpack. <laughs> but anyways, I, go ahead. Sorry, I, I don't want to interrupt you, Rob. No, 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 no. You're not interrupting. Uh, we'll get to the question, and then we can dive in a little bit more to that. Before we do that, we want to talk to you about DynexDrones.com. Go to www.DynexDrones, and that's D-Y-N-N-E-X Drones.com slash Drone U. Check them out. They're a good source for you to go buy a drone if you're trying to get your business off the ground or maybe you want to upgrade. Maybe you want to look at buying one of these Mavic Pro 2s that are coming out here soon. They have financing available to you. They've got great customer service on record. You can find that on Google, things like that. Check them out and use the code DRONEUSAVE and the number 25. DRONEUSAVE25, all caps, and you'll get 25 bucks off your order. So check them out. I think you'll be glad you did. Hey, guys. This is Carlos from Florida. I wanted to first say thank you for all the content that you guys put out. I recently became a Drone U member, and before that, I was scouring the internet for uh, information on getting into the drone business, and quite honestly, there's a lot of bad info out there, stuff that doesn't even look legit. So thank you guys for your content, because your content is one of the better ones that I've seen out there. So. I bought myself a Phantom 3 SC before I became a Drone U member, I guess to practice and get my flying skills up. Unfortunately, I just lost the unit. It happens, I guess. <laughs> I'm still mad of it. But now I'm in the market for a new drone. I know that judging by the past podcast, you guys usually recommend a Phantom 4 Pro if you're trying to get a drone business started because of its versatility and how it's able to fly and all that and if you're on a tight budget. So you guys always recommend that drone. But I am also looking at the Mavic Pro. And my question is, what is the Mavic Pro good for? You guys rarely recommend it, um, so I would also like to know why. And is there ever a time that you would recommend that drone over the Phantom? Or is that just like a additional drone? Should operators have a Phantom or an Inspire and also a Mavic Pro for portability or whatever? Want to know your thoughts on that? Thank you so much for everything. You guys are awesome. Keep up the good work. So he's got a good question. You know, he's like, why don't you recommend the Mavic Pro? I know you're always hearing about the Phantom 4 Pro. Look, the Mavic Pro... When you, when you really fly for a long time, like you've built up thousands of hours, you notice little nuances from vehicle to vehicle. 
And people say if you can fly one DJI drone, you can fly them all. I don't really believe that, as each of them have their own unique characteristics. And you have to remember as well, the airframe itself is going to have an effect on the characteristics of how it flies, which is why the Inspire is so stable and agile, right? The mm-hmm. center of gravity is really low. We have that nice H kind of platform. Right. And... You know, it's built for speed and agility. The Phantom has a great CG as well, but it doesn't fly nearly as agile as, let's say, an Inspire 1. Now, when we take that center of gravity and make it even closer to the motors, then further away for more stability, that pendulum effect, if you want to think of it like that, we're able to do less and less dynamic flight movements. Let me give you a good example. Um, When I was in uh, another country shooting a surfing video, I had a Phantom with me and I had a Mavic Pro with me. Mm -hmm. And one morning, my Phantom uh, batteries were not charged because the group that I was staying with um, had an RV and they didn't really take care of the generator, which was a problem Uh, for me because if I can't charge, I can't really film. Which was funny because amidst all those problems, I ended up winning video of the year. But um, anyway, long story short, I had the Mavic Pro out. I was flying it around the boat. And my one signature move that we teach in the subject tracking class, the horseshoe movement, where you kind of go across the boat nice and smooth to go from one side of the wave to the other side of the wave, across the bow to get the nice reflection off the bow, makes the boat look really big and powerful. Right. You can't do that on a Mavic Pro because it cannot handle the amount of speed and yaw you need to do. Sure. So it can't do it smoothly. It's always trying to auto adjust, even in, in attitude mode, because I hacked my Mavic Pro. Is part of that because of the software on the bird or just because of the infrastructure? I, of the I bird, think it's the infrastructure. The it could be be software i really don't know the answer to that question work it just doesn't work um and i think it's the airframe um the airframe saying like oh i'm about to go in like you know crash mode here i'm gonna correct i'm just not capable of what you're trying to get me to do uh uh-huh and i've racked the maximum roll um degrees and maximum pitch degrees and it doesn't help so that's why Mm. i don't recommend it to everyone is it a great drone to take with you on family vacation and get dronies and do all this stuff yes it is rob just did that last week with the mavic air and the Mavic mm. Air is actually even better oh, than great. the Mavic Pro. <laughs> oh, that was great. Took it to tell your eye and it was perfect. That's awesome. And that high elevation, dude, that actually oh, says yeah. a lot about the Mavic Air right it, there. It, you know what? The battery didn't last very long, but uh, I was flying that sucker at about 11,000 feet. That's awesome. That's <laughs> And it did fine. That's awesome. It did fine. And for all of you uh, drone police out there, uh, he's standing at 11,000 feet. Because the mountains go to 15,000 feet. So. Yes, it probably was not 100 feet above me. That's I, re- right. I remember Ted actually telling a story in part 107 class that you could literally breach class alpha airspace if you take off at uh, the Telluride airport and literally go up like 1,500 feet and you're in alpha airspace, which is a big no-no for dronies. Yeah, it's just so high there. And we were a yeah. long way from the airport, by the way. Yeah, but that's one of the most beautiful airports too because oh it's like on a mesa and just mm. drops mm-hmm. off. Yeah, where the rich and famous fly in. That is true. Anyway, okay, so the Mavic Pro. Great drone, great to travel with, great to pack, right? One of my favorite backpacks has the Mavic Pro. It's a GPC backpack, shocker. Mavic Pro, Osmo. I actually just talked to Rick um, from GPC. I said, you know what? You got to make a Ronin S case with like a Phantom or a Mavic or a Mavic 2 or something because that would be the only case I would take everywhere with me. If it was a Phantom 5, Ronin S, my camera, that's all I need. So do they do custom? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. So, but I mean, like most of the things that I bring up, uh, Aldrin from San Diego brings up pretty much the same thing and other people have suggestions. So he kind of listens to like a certain group of pilots yeah. and then makes a decision and then goes forward. Right. And obviously ideally he wants to take those suggestions and create them into something they can mass produce. Exactly. Of course. Yep. Yep. So I love GPC though. I mean, what other company does that? No, they're great. Nobody. So yeah, awesome. anyway, sorry, switch tracking there. <laughs> um, one of the things we haven't talked about is the fact that the new Mavic 2 or the Mavic Pro 2 has a one inch CMOS sensor. Another reason I don't recommend the Mavic Pro is it's not really good for mapping. If you want high quality maps, you need at least a one inch sensor to do it. And the Mavic Pro doesn't have that. But the Mavic Pro 2 will. It will have a one-inch sensor, so you could use it for mapping. Now, we don't know what type of shutter it has, whether it's a global shutter 
or a rolling shutter. And I want to clarify on a couple of statements I've made in the past. A global shutter can be mechanical or digital. It's just about being global. So I kind of screwed that up in the past. I just want to correct myself really quick right here. Make sure you guys know that. The biggest difference in drones for mapping is you got to make sure you don't have a drone with rolling shutter. It's got to be a global shutter. It's so important. Okay. With the Mavic Pro 2, we're going to be able to map. We're going to be able to have a higher grade of sensor so we can mm -hmm. take better pictures. We don't have one, so we don't know how it flies. But I would imagine it's going to have some more limitations than, say, a Phantom 5. Yeah, I would think so. Because he's still kind of at that question of, would you recommend the Mavic, whether it's the Pro or the 2? Obviously, there's going to be a big difference there. There versus is. Versus some of the other drones that are out there that I might want to get going with. and it's Because he, he asked about the idea of, is, really, is price really what it's about? And... All things being equal, meaning you want to build a drone business, it really does come down to that, right? I yeah. mean, you've got to, your budget is what it is. So I brought up this picture, and I'll make sure to send it to you so that uh, Kirill can put it in the podcast. But one thing that I do whenever I have a Mavic Pro, since the camera quality is only 12 megapixels, I typically take a lot of panos. I don't use an auto pano thing. I take the pano myself. So this is 12 images stitched together with an 85% overlap. So hmm. okay. huge overlap yeah. all the way through. And that's so how you get the of detail. Those 12 in there. Exactly. And yeah. that's how you get the detail. This picture is over 100 megapixels. Very interesting. Yeah. So you can trick the system essentially by doing panos. So when you say you're doing a pano yourself, you're just click, click. I'm click, literally like click. facing the drone this yeah. way, click. Slight movement, click. Yeah. Slight movement, click. Yeah. And then I just use, um, to put panos together, I've been using Photoshop because for whatever reason, it does a better job than Lightroom. But then I output to DNG and put it back in Lightroom. Yeah, it's it's a mess. All those details. So Well, in Lightroom, you can get rid of this haze right here really, really well. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, which would really make that pop a little bit more. But mm -hmm. So something like this, if you were to be working in Hawaii, let's say, and you're trying to get resort work, that kind of thing. Did you say thing, if? When? Uh, okay. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> My bad. When you're working in Hawaii or when our friend Carlos is working in Hawaii. <laughs> I mean, you could use a Mavic Pro for something like this if you do what you did. I mean, if you get creative and that's your budget, you're not completely limited. No, you're not. But the reason that I typically recommend a Phantom is it's really not that much more to carry. True. Especially the GPC backpack um, has ample room in it to carry all of your cameras, a Phantom, all your batteries, an iPad. You could even stick a Mavic in there too. I've done it. Um, it's a fantastic, fantastic thing. But the reason I don't recommend it is because it's a lot more work. And yeah, people true. typically want convenience, they want easy systems, they don't want more work. Well, and if you're building a business, systems and efficiency are a huge part of growth. But I also think, so, to your point, it's really important to start with something really small because it forces you to be creative and get other shots that people aren't getting because they have money and they're lazy. And if you want to win, you have to be creative. Yeah. So in essence, yeah, it could be good. But the reason that I haven't really recommended it is because it takes this level of thought and depth to explain why. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know? And that being said, the Phantom 5 is coming out soon too, and I'm pretty sure it'll have interchangeable lenses, which will take mapping to a whole new level. So if that does happen, I'm still going to be like, ah, Phantom, <laughs> just because yeah. the way it flies. I mean, like, it's just so I can versatile. get a Phantom to stall midair and catch it. Like, it's... It's, yeah, it's just You've too versatile it. and it's not horribly expensive. It's just it's, not, it's relatively not. speaking. It's a workhorse. So, yeah. and the other thing too is the Phantom can take a beating, the Mavic cannot. The Mavic hmm. Air, your Mavic Air can take a serious beating. Yes, it the can. The Mavic Pro, it cannot. It's very, very fragile. Interesting. Hmm. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Anyway, that answers that question. Hope so. If you have a question, go to askadroneu.com. By the way, thank you for your support and thank you for becoming a member. If you guys want to become a member, go to droneu.education and check it out. Uh, we're going to be doing a show actually coming up, kind of talking about something that's really been getting on my nerves. A lot of people go into DroneU and they go in the community and they get so excited, right? Just like you're, you're buying your first drone. You do get it. You're so excited. You want to go out and fly and then you forgot to do a compass calibration and bye-bye. Fly away. Well, with DroneU, we're going to be doing a show because someone asked, like, what can I do, you know, around these courses and resources and everything? So we're going to be doing a show on, let's say you join DroneU. What do you do? There's so much content, it may be hard to navigate. Well, we're going to be going over that because people have been asking me for a quote-unquote system on the business end, the consulting end, 
to say, I want to train my pilots in two weeks. What do I do? And I'm like, well, here's the system. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be going over that soon. Uh, if you've been kind of contemplating joining DroneU and you're like, ah, there's just so much. I don't know where to get started. Or, man, I've been doing this for years. Can I really learn anything? I think the answer might be yes. Um, as far as how much, probably a lot less than other people, but I still think you can learn a lot. I have to say, too, one of the things that I've really figured out here, Rob, in success as I've watched those around me is the one of the biggest drivers of success is you have to have two things, a lifelong or a willingness for lifelong learning. You're always open to learn. It's, it's so important. And you have a passion for what you're doing. Yeah. Those two things, you're going to be golden pony boy. And even that whole passion, that's a big discussion because that that's a deeper thought than you think, meaning I'm part of Drone You. I don't have to be passionate about drones, but what aspect of drone you am I passionate about, right? So I'm talking more about like if you have a passion and a grit to do what you love, right? You're gonna work so much harder than you know, yeah, a lot of other people. I hear and, you. and I hear you. You know, that's that's another reason we're we're building the business class. So many people are jumping into the drone business and they don't understand how hard it is to run a business. Yeah, they go from their desk jobs to holy crap, I have to do all of this. Right. I have to wear all of these hats. Yeah, you do. And it's not that hard. You just build habits. Then that turns into routines. Those routines turn into systems. And before you know it, you're making more money than you know what to do with. And you're a happy camper. Sounds great. On Sign that, me up. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for <laughs> us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Dronio. Hey.